Today we're going to look at the easiest way to start automating your finances so that you can save more money, stick to your budget, and keep your credit score in check. So what does automating your finances actually mean? Usually when you're automating something, you're setting up a process to make it easier. So in this case, we are setting up a process to kind of put your finances on autopilot so that it's a lot easier to actually manage your money. So when you automate your finances, this usually includes putting your bills on auto pay and automatically having things set up to where money automatically goes into your savings accounts and automatically goes into your investing accounts as well. So this can take a little bit of time to initially set up, but once you actually have everything in place, this is where it gets super easy to actually see where your money is going and it makes it a lot easier to start saving towards those goals that you want to achieve. And it'll save you the time and headache of manually going and tracking down your money and manually moving money every month. But why should you automate your finances? So it's going to make it a lot easier to make sure that your bills are always paid on time, make sure your credit cards are always paid on time, and make sure that you're actually saving the amount of money that you intend to. It's super important to automate as much of this as possible so that you aren't paying late fees, you aren't hurting your credit score, and so that you're actually setting enough money aside in case of an emergency. So we're going to walk through five steps to actually help you start automating your finances and by the end of this video, you should be at a place where you can have all of this set up and ready to go. The first thing you need to do is to start paying yourself first. And yes, this is the same cheesy thing that every financial guru and book says to do, but it's super important that you are actually doing this. So this means intentionally setting aside a fixed percentage of your income before you do anything else. So this is for savings and for retirement. This is not for frivolous spending, and this is not even to pay your bills. If you watched one of the previous videos on the book, The Richest Man in Babylon, the percentage that they set out in that book is 10%. So that is a good percentage to start with. So let's look at how you can actually set aside that money every single month. First, in order to start automating any of this, you need to make sure that you have direct deposit set up with your employer. So this is pretty standard and it's likely that you already have this set up because it is pretty common among most employers now that they do require you to set up direct deposit. This is where they're just automatically depositing your paycheck directly into your bank account without you having to like receive a physical check and deposit it yourself. This is the easiest and the fastest way for you to get paid and it's good to have that set up so that you know exactly what days your paychecks are coming in on. So once you have direct deposit set up, you also want to make sure that you automatically have a portion of that set aside through your employer's retirement plan if they offer you one. For most people, this is likely going to be a 401k or a 403b or some plan that is similar to those. For these retirement plans, sometimes your employer will actually match a certain amount which means that, for example, you can contribute 1% of your income and they will match that full 1%. So that for you is pretty much free money and you want to make sure that you are signed up for that and you aren't missing out on that extra money that your employer is offering you. They're going to take that directly out of your paycheck. So that happens before that money gets into your bank account. So whatever you receive in your bank account is what you have left to work with. So once you have direct deposit and all of the retirement stuff set up, the next step is to automatically set aside 10% of that to go towards your savings accounts or retirement accounts if you have any external ones or wherever else you want that 10% to go. So we'll discuss the easiest way to do this in step five. But the next step, step two, is to set up automatic bill pay. So this is going to ensure that you are paying your bills on time and in full every month, every time they're due. And yes, this does include credit cards. Usually for your utility companies, your mortgage company, your credit card companies, you can go directly to their websites and make sure that you have that automatic payment turned on. This will automatically charge your credit card or your debit card or whatever you're using. That way you can make sure that you are never missing a payment. Now, a key part of this is to always know when your bills are due. So why this is important is because you want to make sure that this aligns with when your paycheck is automatically being deposited into your account. 
you want to make sure that you always have enough money in there to cover the upcoming bills. I'll leave a link to a free PDF in the description with just a simple little table where you can fill out which bills you have and what days they're due. Then you can print that out and put it somewhere where you will remember to check it. If for whatever reason you're worried about some of your bills having kind of weird payment dates or you're not sure if your paycheck will hit your account before those bills will, usually that's not a problem. So your service providers, whether that's your phone bill or water bill or whoever, usually they're fine with it if you call them up and ask them to move the payment date. Because that is a recurring charge, they want to make sure that they're getting paid too. So usually if you explain that to them, they will be happy to adjust that for you. And just taking that one small little step to call them will ensure that you absolutely know when your bills are due and that'll make sure that you never miss a payment and that you always have enough money in your account to cover those bills. So now that you've checked the dates for all of your bills and you've gotten all of that adjusted, it's time to actually turn on those automatic payments. If you're using a credit card, this is usually the easiest way to do this. Once you have gone into all of your service providers and you have turned on those automatic payments, you then want to go into your credit card account and make sure that you have that set up so that your credit card bill is paid every month on time and in full. This option is usually under your billing or payment settings and you just have to go in there and select when and how much of your credit card you want to pay off. The two options that you'll likely see are the full statement amount or the minimum monthly payment. As we have discussed many times before, the best way to make sure that you are keeping a good credit score is to pay off that credit card on time and in full every single month. And again, just make sure that that lines up with your dates that you're getting your paycheck. That way you can make sure that you always have enough money in your account. That's all great if you have a credit card, but what do you do if you don't? Or if you have to pay bills like your water bill or maybe your rent where credit card is not accepted. For this, most banks offer an online bill pay option. You'll want to log into your online bank, look for that bill pay section, and then from there you can enter which companies you're paying, you'll enter their billing information, and then you can set up to have those charges automatically paid every month for you. And if you have bills that happen more often, like every couple weeks or just every few months, you can go in and change what those bills are and how often you're paying them. So now, even though we have all of these bills automatically set up to pay themselves, you will still always, always, always want want to check your bank statements and credit card statements because if there's anything suspicious going on you always want to catch that up front instead of catching it months down the road. So now that you are one step closer to fully automating your finances, the third thing that you need to do is automatically track your spending. Yes, budgeting and tracking your spending can be a pain, but there are a lot of programs out there that will actually do it for you automatically. So you can use a free app like Mint and actually connect your accounts so that you know what you're spending, how much you're saving, what's going into your investing accounts, and all of that is tracked automatically for you. So with Mint, whenever you spend money, it's going to categorize that charge for you. My only gripe with that app is that sometimes it recognizes transfers as charges and like mixes up some weird things, but you can always go back and manually fix it. That really only takes a couple of minutes every month to go back and review those transactions and fix the categories, but it makes it a super easy way to just automatically know where you are spending your money. This information is extremely important to have so that you can actually create a budget for yourself. And what's nice is that you can create a budget within the app. It will automatically deduct the amount that you spend from whichever budget categories you set. And of course, you can always just manually do it yourself, but the point here is that you need to know what you're spending so that you can actually budget for it. The fourth thing that you need to do, which I think is the most important, is to set up automatic investing. M1 Finance, which is what I have up on the screens, is an investing app that makes it really easy to actually start automating all of that for you. And they have a bunch of different account types. So if you want to open up an individual account or a Roth IRA, you can definitely do that and start automating any of those. 
So your M1 Finance portfolio, as you can see on the screens behind me, is visualized as this pie. And so every time that you buy a stock or an ETF, you set what percentage of that pie you want that stock or ETF to be. Because of that pie structure, I think that M1 Finance is one of the easiest brokerages to use when it comes to automating your long-term investments, because every time that you put money into your account, it's going to distribute that money and keep those percentages that you set as close as possible. And it's automatically going to do that for you. So you don't have to do any of that calculation yourself. And on top of that, if you're someone that doesn't like to pick your own stocks or your own ETFs, they do have pre-built portfolios for you and they call those expert pies. So what you can do is go in and select one of those, make that your portfolio. And then every time you invest, it will automatically match those percentages to whatever is in that expert pie. And they have that for a bunch of different categories. So if you're into dividend investing or you want a retirement portfolio or you're into socially responsible investing, all of those are options and you can look through any of those and see if any of them are the right fit for you. So the other good thing about using them is that you can set up automatic investing schedules and you can set up automatic dividend reinvestment. You can link your bank account and easily set up a recurring transfer schedule. So you'll choose how much you want to be transferred in and when that actually occurs and how often. And if you'd like to reinvest all of your cash and any dividends that you earn, you can turn on auto invest and then you should be good to go. So when you use that auto invest in combination with those automatic transfers, pretty much your investing is automatically set up and you should be good there. Now, the fifth thing that we need to automate is your emergency fund and your savings goals. Now that your income, bills, budget, and your investments are all on autopilot, it's time to actually address your other savings goals and your emergency fund. This can be part of that 10% that we talked about setting aside earlier, or this could even be extra money that you set aside on top of that. Putting your money into a savings account may be a good idea for shorter term goals, but if you have longer term goals, you could also consider the idea of investing that money. If you choose to use M1 Finance, you can actually create different pies for the different goals that you have. To make your life even easier, you can use M1 Spend and M1 Transfer in addition to M1 Invest. And yes, that's a lot to keep track of, but I wasn't fully aware of this until I saw their CEO talking with Meet Kevin. But essentially what M1 Spend is, is an FDIC insured checking account. So once you have that set up, you can use M1 transfers to set up these automatic rules of where you want your money to go. So for example, if you just want to keep $2,000 in your checking account at one time, you can tell M1 Finance what to do with that extra money. So maybe you want to have any extra money go to your retirement account first, and then you want to have it go towards your house savings and then to your travel savings, and then to your emergency fund or something like that. And if you have all of that set up with M1, again, all of that is fully automatic. But there are a lot of other ways that you could go about automating your finances. The important thing is that you are making it the easiest that you can for yourself so that you are able to reach those investing and savings goals. If you'd like to see what it looks like to use an M1 Finance account and how to sign up, go ahead and click this video right here where I show you how I set up my Roth IRA with M1 Finance.